So greetings to you. This is uh, carry on from the last one, part number one about sexuality, pornography and stuff like that. I encourage you to listen to the first part. And again, if you like my videos, please, can you like them, turn on the notification bell, subscribe down in the right hand corner on the little red button, turn on your notification bell so you get notices of when I send it. And let's get this stuff out here. Let's let's share the glorious good news of Jesus. For Jesus is wonderful news. He came to set us free. He bore our sins on the cross. He bore our curses on the cross. He became poor that we should become rich. He became sin that we should become the righteousness of Christ. And we are all about his grace. Our lives are hidden in Christ. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. And I want to talk about freedom. Continue talking about freedom today. So we heard that the, the immorality, pornography, all these perversions we hear in of, of homosexuality and bestiality and pedophilia, adultery, fornication used to be the old word for it, okay, are schemes of the devil to destroy, to rob, kill and destroy. And we're called to take our stands against the schemes of the devil, as it says in Ephesians 6. Listen, by the way, to my series on spiritual warfare. It's going to help you. And so I want to just say spiritual adultery. It's quite interesting that in Israel, the history of Israel is how they committed spiritual adultery. In other words, they rejected God. They were unfaithful to God and they prostituted themselves with other gods. Molech, Dagon, Isis, Astoreth. It was called spiritual prostitution. And actually, when they did that, they started acting out sexual prostitution and immorality in the natural. So, for instance, when Moses went up the mountain, Mount Sinai, to get the law, they made an idol out of gold, a calf, and they worshipped it, idolatry. And guess what else they indulged in? Sexual immorality. See, the occult, idolatry, go together with sexual immorality. In fact, sexual immorality, pornography is a form of idolatry. And if you are bound by this, it's, I'm not here to condemn you today, but I'm here to say to you, Jesus can set you free. It's good news. Do not be fooled into believing you are an addict. You, if you are born again Christian, can say no to sin. If you're not born again, then you've got a problem because you cannot set yourself free. You'll just keep on going back. The first step to freedom in any person's life is to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. And if you haven't done that, you can do that today. Just pray get down on your knees. Pray a simple prayer. Lord, I'm a sinner. My sin is wrong. I repent. Jesus, come into my life. Show me your grace and your love today. I die to myself. And I want to be born again in Christ. You can pray that prayer. Simple as that. And that is the start of a walk of salvation. Okay. It's a start of working out of wholeness. Salvation sozo means wholeness. Body, soul and spirit. So that is the start of freedom from any form of addiction. Especially sexual addiction. So today we, we're talking about how Israel uh, also committed spiritual adultery. And it reflected in actual physical adultery and immorality. And it's the same today as society turns away from God. So they fall deeper and deeper into sexual, spiritual adultery. It's uh, their, their unfaithfulness to, to, to the God that they have known, by the way. Most cultures in this day and age have known God. A lot of cultures are Judo-Christian culture, but they've turned away. And guess what? They are falling deeper and deeper and deeper into perversion. So like all sin, it's addictive, can be addictive, and it gets worse and worse and worse. So you start off pornography, you might start looking at a few beautiful women on the internet, or men, whatever, or both, actually, bisexuality is so common today. Because again, as an, as an ex-New Ager, our, our aim was for an androgynous society, a a, a society where men were women and women were men. We see it in the transgender, the whole gender issue today, the whole argument about it is to do away with family life, which depends on a husband and a wife. It's like boys will be girls and girls will be boys. There was a famous song by a guy called Lou Reed. Take a walk on the wild side. 
<laughs> and uh, all about boys being girls and girls being boys. Interesting enough, he became a Christian just before he died. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but so bisexuality, perversion, and, and all these things of pornography are addictive and they lead into deeper and deeper perversion. Because at its core, pornography can start off like looking at some beautiful women, then it's like, that's not enough, and then it's nude women, and then it's like sexual acts, and then the next thing it's acts with animals, and so it descends into more and more debased form of sexuality, perversion, pedophilia being, in my mind, the ultimate, and even the whole thing of just having sexuality and a link to abortion where huh, the byproduct of immorality is just disposable, disposable fetuses. No life. It's all linked. It's all linked. By the way, the occult does that. Sexuality, they give birth, they sacrifice those children, they use them in rituals. It's all linked, guys. And we're seeing that played out in society where sexual immorality is acceptable, where perverse lifestyles is acceptable, where bisexuality is acceptable. And the byproduct is unwanted birth. Those kids are just aborted, chopped up, and used for spare parts. It's horrible. It's a sign of the satanic end times. Let me just say that. The problem with pornography and those things is they become more and more addictive. And as you become more and more addictive, so you become more and more secretive. Because you become actually more and more ashamed. And more and more depressed. Because in your heart, every person knows that it's horrible. That it's debasing the image of God. Because that's what Satan wants to do. We are created in God's image. So when we act like animals, Satan loves it. And you know, like pornography is like liberal society. Oh, it's so good to have pornography and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's wonderful. It's freedom. You know, women should be free to do so. Let me tell you, ladies, <laughs> ladies who are involved in porn, men love that. Because you know what? It's sex without any responsibility. They, in fact, guys just love that kind of thing. Ladies, let me tell you something. No man wants to marry a loose woman. He'll have sex with a loose woman, with an immoral lady. He'll love taking you and getting drunk and having sex with you, but don't expect him to marry you because how could he ever trust somebody that's doing that? And guys are such hypocrites. You know, they will, they will screw around, and yet when it comes to... To looking for a wife, they'll want somebody who's pure. Partly because you don't want to defile your children by having a loose woman. So ladies, you need to understand you've fallen into a scheme of the devil, but also men's scheme to use women as sexual tools. That's what pornography does. And ladies, you of all people should be standing up against pornography because it is just treating women like sexual objects you can't permit pornography in the world and then say i expect i expect as a woman to be treated with respect that's why there's no respect for women that is why men are just you know raping left right and center it's disgusting it's bad but it's provoked by pornography let me tell you you don't have to be a genius to work out if you see a debased sexual acts on a porn screen and then you expect to go out into the street and see a woman not see her through those eyes you've got to be stupid and society makes that there's no link duh come on <laughs> there's a direct link between the increase in sexual violence and pornography pornography is a disgrace and we need to start standing against it it's highly addictive because it's demonic so there's a demonic component when you start watching porn even though it's in the privacy of your own room you know that's men kid themselves oh yeah but i just watch it by myself and what they do is they watch porn by themselves and then they masturbate and they and they sit there and they say well i'm not i'm not harming anyone yes you are first of all you promote in the porn industry by watching this stuff and let, me, and let me tell you something, what happens, you are harming yourself. You are sinning against your own body. You are harming your psyche. And what I've seen, and, and I'm talking to married men here because I know many married men are doing this. 
Let me tell you what I've seen in years of ministry. I've seen that men who indulge in, 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 in pornography secretly, because it's always, a, a thing it's Ephesians 4, it's saying, it says it's shameful to mention what the disobedient do in secret. Often those men are impotent in the marriage bed. They, 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 they lose their virility. They lose their ability to get an erection. They cannot make love to their wives. And yet they can watch a prostitute on a screen or couples on a screen watch pornography and, and everything's fine. So it's interesting the increase in impotence and I think the increase in sterility is linked to the demonic component to pornography. Now guys, if that's you, get some help. If you are addicted to porn, let me just say, if you are a Christian, you do not need to be addicted to porn. If you're not Christian, as I said previously, you've got problems. And the only way out of it is to give your life unto death to Jesus and be born again. Because it's by the Spirit of God we have freedom. So guys, sp pornography is harmful. If, if you are a married man, it's going to harm your marriage bed. You'll find your, your, your sexuality declining towards your wife and increasing towards perversity on the internet. And you will feel more ashamed and more condemned. You'll draw away from God and you'll actually draw away your family. And what I've seen, I've seen this in, in church leadership as well. I was being in a church where some of the top leaders were indulging in pornography. And guess what? That had a spiritual pass down effect that like virtually every second man in that church was also involved in pornography. You see what we do, guys, what we do affects those who are under our covering. And let me say, the order, the spiritual order in the household is the head of the man is Christ and the head of the woman is man. That's not in a controlling way. It's in the spiritual sense. And it talks about that ladies should put a covering on their heads for the sake of the angels. Now, I don't know if you've ever thought, now in these days we put a ring on. Okay, so it's a sign, a sign of my fidelity to my wife is my ring and she has one. But it's a sign to the demonic angels Remember in Genesis, it said that the angels, the demon angels, the fallen angels lusted after the daughters of men, lusted after women. And they came down and they actually participated sexually. It's called a succubus or incubus spirit. And many people, many women have these visitations in the night where they wake up with something lying on top of them and actually having sexual encounters with spirits. And too many are too afraid to talk about it. I've seen it hundreds of times. But you see those demonic angels like want to have sex with women who are beautiful. And they defile women with that. And many, many men and women struggle, both men with homosexual spirits and stuff like this. And it's all secret. Guys, it says in 1 John, it says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have true fellowship with one another. Bring it into the light. Confess your sins with what to one another. That you may be healed. Repent. Let's get it into the open. You know, I used to be bound up by pornography. Oh, my God. Like before I was saved, you know, in those days it was like Playboys and Penthouses magazines. And we used to like have them lying around in the house. Can you believe it? And when I became a Christian, I, for a while I was still bound. And I remember I had my secret stash of porn up in the cupboard. And one day my mother-in-law came to visit. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, embarrassing. She was cleaning out the cupboards and as she opened the cupboards, <laughs> my secret stash of porn fell out onto her head. <laughs> oh, that was embarrassing. <laughs> but actually, I'm glad that happened because it brought it into the light. And my wife and myself were able to be set free. Because you see, we grew up with a lie. Pornography, by the way, is a lie. We grew up with the lie that porn is okay and actually will enhance your marriage. Do not believe that lie. It's a lie from the pit of hell. Pornography is a lie. Those people you see and the sexual acts they act out are a lie. They're exaggerated. That is not normal. And the problem with pornography, as you watch this stuff, so you start to get this wrong understanding of what sex is and when you get married or if you are married 
your wife or your husband doesn't fulfill those expectations. You say, well, the, the, the porn star, yo, he goes on all night, you know, and or she goes on all night, and, da, da, da. and you start to like despise what God's given you. See, because pornography and the lust for that type of thing is based on the lie that God, what God's given you, is not good enough. You see, I totally believe that my wife is perfectly suited to me, and I'm perfectly suited to her. And we can have great fun together. We don't need, I don't need to look at anyone else. And she doesn't need to look at anyone else. And by the way, if we do, guess what the first thing? If I feel stirred up by some other woman, the first thing I do is I go and tell my wife. And if she does the same for me, because that just kills all sexual lust. And guys, there's temptation out there. All the time, every time we open a book or, or a magazine, there's sexuality being thrown at us. But we need to resist it and we need to know that pornography should not be part of our lives. We are, as Christians, we cannot enter into immorality. It's not part of our lives. It's, it destroys our family life. If Guys, if you're doing pornography, what I've seen, I've seen guys doing pornography in total secret. And then the next thing they know, their wife's going off and committing adultery. And they're like, she, my wife's being so unfaithful. And I, bro... You have been committing adultery because Jesus said, even if you look lustfully at, at a woman, you commit adultery with her. So adultery doesn't, it's not about the physical act, it's the act of the heart. If, you, if you're a Christian man and you are watching pornography, you are an adulterer. And you need to repent and get set free in the name of Jesus. Because, let me tell you, if you don't, it will affect your marriage. You'll find your kids start, start becoming moral. And they do the very things you do in secret. They're going to start doing openly. It's, a, it's unbelievable. Uh, again, the other day, I ministered to a man. He said, oh, uh, I'm impotent towards my wife. I, I, I can't have sex. And as the guy was speaking, the Lord said to me, this guy's bound porn by pornography. And I said to him, yeah, but you can, you, can, you can be sexually aroused when you watch porn, isn't it? He was like shocked. How do you know that? So because the Holy Spirit just told me. So there's nothing wrong with you medically because that's what he was asking for healing. Can you believe it? Asking for healing for his impotence, but his impotence was only towards his wife, not towards some prostitute on the Internet. And, and God gave me a word of knowledge. I was able to lead him to repentance, forgiveness. And freedom because that's what God wants for us God wants us to be free he doesn't want us to be bound by all this stuff but guys let me say you 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 have a spiritual covering over your family and if you are indulging in sin that will affect your family it doesn't mean to say you you've lost your eternal life this is not about losing your eternal life or not but it is about honoring God in the name of Jesus it is about living a healthy life it is about living righteously living it out okay so so and it, it's satan comes to rob kill and destroy let me tell you something you will you will come into destruction if you carry on on the path of pornography you go deeper and deeper and deeper and if you're not careful you'll not only lose your health you will lose your family God, I don't want to kind of say that as a type of I'm just saying it as something I've seen over the years and let me assure you I've ministered to thousands of people over 30 years. Deliverance and healing ministry. So the point is that sterility, senses of inadequacy. By the way, when you watch porn, you are guaranteed to feel inadequate. You cannot perform to what these guys do. Half of them are on drugs, by the way, when they're doing these performances. And half of it is trick photography. And what's not... Guys, you don't want to go there. So you will start feeling inadequate and you will start feeling useless and that will start affecting you. So the question is, is how do we come to freedom? How do we come to freedom from pornography? Because it is highly destructive. It is highly demonic. It is belittling of those who participate in it and watch it. And it's a big money spinner, by the way. And we need to come out of it. We need to get into some place of healing and deliverance. 
because it's going to rob us. And I've just found people when they're involved in pornography and all that, they, they just don't move in any anointing because they know deep down that they're dishonoring themselves, they're dishonoring other people, and they're dishonoring God. So the next uh, little video we're going to share, or the next clip is going to be, how do we get free? Again, I encourage you, please share this. Click the like button. Share it with others because others, many, many people, men and women these days, are bound by pornography and secret perversions. Secret sex life. Secrecy is not of the kingdom of God. So get this out there. Let people know. Give us a call if you need help. We have a deliverance team. We have a healing team. We can pray for you over Zoom if you're in another part of the world. We, we pray for hundreds of people every year. Okay, we love you. Please remember God loves you. This is not about condemnation. God wants you to be free. But we are called to repent of our sin, to turn away from our sin and get set free. It's good news. That's why Jesus died on the cross, that we should have full, abundant, joyful life. Love you guys. Let's go to the next video.